how defensive are you? What, when have you been defensive? Why were you defensive? Where were you coming from when you were defensive? Was it an identity? Do you feel like it was an attack on your identity? Do you feel like it was an attack on your worth, on your value? Do you, you know, what, where was it coming from? Or can you take criticism or feedback, either constructive criticism or hateful criticism, and, and, and let it flow off of you? And take, if there's kernels of truth in there, learn the lesson, apply it, and then move on? Or do you take it personally? When have you taken things personally that led you to potentially be defensive? EQ Gangsters, another post jujitsu episode here that got me got me thinking. <laughs> so that's my that's my therapy. That's how I how I take care of my, myself, my mind, body, and even soul. Man, it's a, it's a it's really a lot of soul food in there for me for so many different layers of why I love jujitsu. Well, I'm very thankful that God has allowed me to stick with it. I've been with it for five years now. It's been just such a huge blessing. So the thought is, the episode for today is, I was so I'm reading this book called How We Love by Mylan and Kay Yurkovich. It is absolute fire. I'm going to be doing some more episodes about what I'm learning from that book. And one of the things that I was thinking about today is one of the comments that they made in the book is somebody that is secure in themselves. And I would also say someone that, that has good emotional intelligence is not defensive. And I saw a video from some of y'all will know the name Simon Sinek. Simon Sinek was driving in a car with a big cheese Apple executive. And Simon was kind of being intentionally provocative to see what kind of response he would get from this big, big Apple executive. And he told this Apple executive, hey, you know, Bob, I'll say Bob, hey Bob, I tried out the Microsoft you know, I, I have no idea what their devices are, but I tried out some Microsoft, you know, uh, tablet, and I thought it was way better than the Apple tablet. And the Apple executive looked over at him and said, that's great. I bet it is. <laughs> <laughs> kept you know looking ahead and and you know and so you know when for Simon Sinek he was like man I was trying to be provocative kind of see if I could get get him kind of riled up a little bit and he said because Apple and this was this was Simon Sinek's kind of takeaway from that little interaction with that big Apple executive he's like that Apple executive did not respond. He wasn't defensive. He wasn't, oh, you're, you know, you're crazy. None of that. He, he said, he said, Apple is so focused on their mission, on their vision, who they are. He said that in, in, in his mind, again, this is Simon Sinek's takeaway. In the Apple guy's mind, there is no competition. The only competition is yesterday's version of Apple. But hey, that's great that 
you think Microsoft's thing is better than that that has nothing to do with my vision or mission or and so but it ties in that story ties in perfectly with this lesson from this book that I you know again that I'm reading so he, but he, so then he he flipped it Simon Sinek flipped it and said hey I bet you if I was talking to a Microsoft guy and said, hey, I think Apple's AirPad or iPad or whatever is better than your tablet, they probably would have gone into the 15 reasons of why they disagreed with me. And he said, you know, again, how, you know, for so his takeaway was, again, how, how solid are you and your vision and your mission? But for me, I'm using it from a, a defensiveness standpoint. How defensive are you? What when have you been defensive? Why were you defensive? Where were you coming from when you were defensive? Was it an identity? Do you feel like it was an attack on your identity? Do you feel like it was an attack on your worth, on your value? Do you, you know, what, where was it coming from? Or can you take criticism or feedback either constructive criticism or hateful criticism and, and and let it flow off of you and take, if there's kernels of truth in there, learn the lesson, apply it, and then move on? Or do you take it personally? When have you taken things personally that led you to potentially be defensive? What causes you to take things personally? When have you taken things personally? So those would be some questions to chew on. And, and you know, I gotta think through this myself. There are some folks at JITS when I roll with them that are higher belts that I've gotta be, that I'm cognizant of my social awareness because some higher belts do not like getting tapped out by lower belts. And you know, and so I just want to be sensitive to that. Not that I still, you know, maybe I'll still tap them. Maybe it's how I tap them. Maybe I can tap them in a way that allows them to save face or, you know, or again, or I just work on my position and not go for the submission. Um, you know, I just want to be aware of where someone's at emotionally because what I don't want to do is like I rolled with a, I won't mention the belt, but a, a high level belt today. And I was, you know, I was able to, to, uh, you know, control the position, dominate the position, but I, but I did not go for the tap because in the past I have seen this particular higher belt get, get kind of emotional and not super excited about getting tapped out by lower belts. And so I make sure that, you know, again, I'm, I'm monitoring his emotional state while I'm rolling with him, even if I'm in a dominant position, just to make sure that he's not getting excited in a, in a negative way. And so, you know, again, that's, that's just social awareness, but it's, it's self-awareness to check yourself, right? How you know, how aware are you of when, again, when you have gotten defensive, there's a, <laughs> in, in one of the previous, one of my previous leadership experiences, I would give this particular leader some coaching and feedback and 100% of the time, this gentleman was defensive. He always had an excuse a rationalization, a story to justify why he was doing it the way he was doing it. He never received feedback. So guess what? I stopped giving it. <laughs> and so it's, it would save me time too on the on the other end. I, I once I realized, okay, he his ego, he's he doesn't have the emotional intelligence to handle feedback. And and, and, you know, he was going to have to obviously live with the consequences of not growing and continuing to do potentially mediocre 
output performance and results because of where his EQ was, which impacted his teachability and his coachability, which ultimately impacted his learning, which ultimately impacted his performance, which impacts his outcomes and results. And so, uh, you know, it might be a good idea just to ask yourself, kind of do a little self-awareness check-in on defensiveness. Hey, how often do I get defensive? What makes me get defensive? Why am I getting defensive? And, and see, and just kind of do a check-in because defensiveness impacts, at a minimum, it'll impact all that stuff that I already said, the learning and the, the, the output and results and performance, but it also may impact the relationship because when I realized that one particular gentleman was just not teachable because his ego, his emotional intelligence was not high enough to allow him to receive any input or, or feedback. And I was giving it very safely, very professionally, very non-threatening. So I wasn't like in his face at all. It was very, hey, can you know, can I, I, I you know, you, I've got a couple suggestions. If you're open, you know, first of all, to ask him, hey, how do you think you did? Oh man, I think I crushed it. So he wasn't very self-aware and, you know, so, so if he was self-aware, that'd be one thing because then he would already know the areas that he needed to work on, but he wasn't self-aware and he didn't have the emotional intelligence to receive feedback so that he could improve his performance and outcomes and results. So it can, it can impact, uh, you know, relationships too. If someone is so, so hypersensitive, which is again, another thing too, just from an emotional health perspective is why are you so sensitive? If you are sensitive, why, where is that coming from? Why are you so sensitive? What makes you so, so trigger shy, so to speak. Um, I will tell you as a result of me becoming healthier emotionally, man, I absolutely, well, and I've always been, I feel like I've always been teachable, but it hasn't always been easy to receive necessarily, but I feel like I've always been teachable. Now I'm teachable and it doesn't impact me emotionally, which is awesome. So now I can, be, and the reason why for me is because it doesn't impact my identity which means it doesn't impact my value or worth. Where before, it absolutely was all tied together. If someone gave me constructive criticism, even with gently and all the right ways and all that kind of stuff, even with people, skills, and empathy, I still would take it personally as a personal attack on my worth and my value. And so, which made, you know, which, which made it rough and, and very difficult to receive that feedback that I was, that they were trying to give me. So, Anyway, how defensive are you? How frequently do you get defensive? Why do you get defensive? What are some ways to get less defensive, to become less defensive and less reactive and more responsive and more emotionally stable and emotionally predictable and emotionally sta safe and emotionally vulnerable? When you're coming from a, a good, emotionally healthy place, I feel like it's much easier to be vulnerable and transparent uh, and, and not defensive because again, it doesn't, feedback doesn't reflect my value, my worth or my identity at all. So those are just some things and thoughts to chew on. Again, check out mydenvertherapy.com, mydenvertherapy.com. It's a great organization, great business. They're doing some great things for, for kids, for teenagers, for parents. Uh, and Courtney Rose is the, again, the owner, and she and her husband is a super guy as well. They're doing some amazing things. So check that out, mydenvertherapy.com. And again, emotionally healthy leaders help create emotionally healthy cultures and organizations, which lead to optimized and maximized performance outcomes and results. Thank you for sharing, subscribing, would really mean it mean a lot if you um, rated and reviewed the podcast, whatever platform you're on, it would really mean a lot, 15, 20 seconds. Thank you so much. Totally appreciate being a part of this journey.